everybody, and welcome James, James Dalton. Good morning. morning. Good morning, Kevin. And Mark, good to see you, Hello, hello, hello James. Hello. Good uh, <laughs> morning, and your name is? Brought James in for a bit of more um, insight into the Super Rugby as, it, uh, as we wind down a season. It's been a tough year for, for, for punters. Um, we still have four games this weekend coming up. So let's get some insight on, on those games. I think we've diff got definitely different opinions. Um, let's start with uh, the first game, Crusaders Highlanders. Yeah, we, we spoke earlier about the league game, that we thought the Highlanders would push them. They didn't. They got hammered. Uh, and I don't see it being any different. I think the Crusaders, they got their, they, they stumbled out the way in Suva, conceded 40 points against the Chiefs. After leading 20 0, they lost 40 27. 66 0 against the Rebels. And I think they're primed at home. I think they'll win comfortably, 15 plus. Cheers. Yeah, I think I'll concur with Mark on that. Uh, the uh, Crusaders at home are certainly, uh, at this stage of uh, any competition, are certainly untouchable. And they'll definitely lift, lift the ante. And uh, highly unlikely that uh, we'll see the Islanders coming close to them. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement definitely on this one. Um, I can't see the Highlanders touching them, but you know I don't know what the weather forecast is, and uh, that may play a role. But uh, I think 15 to 20 points. I think we, I think we could be comfortable with that. Yeah. Certainly. The interesting game for me is the Jags Chiefs. It's the game that you know out of all the games, the bookies only have four games to concentrate on. So for them, it's easy to to snipe and, and be more accurate with their forecasts and with us, with, with teams at full strength. You know, there's no resting, you don't have to worry about who's playing, who's not playing. The Jags and the Chiefs, the bookies say two and a half points that the Jags will win by, by round two or three. Your thoughts on that, James? I would think that that's pretty accurate. Um, the Chiefs are a good team. They are a New Zealand team and uh, they, they, they're known to be able to put uh, big scores on on the opposition. The Jaguars at home, it's, it's uh, like a, a test team. Mm. Uh, the Argentinian test team. At Buenos Aires, they've been known to be consistently good and, uh, and to beat uh, uh, some of the better teams in the competition at home. Mm. So uh, this one can be very close. Um, but yeah, the, the, the two point spread could go either way in my opinion. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tough one to call. Huh? Mark, your opinion? Yeah, I mean, the, the Chiefs beat, they had that fantastic win against the Bulls at Loftus and then travelled to Buenos Aires and snuck a 30-27 win, one in the last minute. So they will take confidence from the fact that they've been there this season and they have won. Uh, they seem to be coming into good form as well. Sam Kane's been back. He's been a huge, huge difference in the way that Packers played. They were outstanding in Suva. 20 nil down, they came back 40-27 and seemed to reignite them when it put 50 points past the Rebels in Melbourne. Uh, <coughs> you would think that confidence of form will be with the Jaguaris, uh, but it's a hell of a tough one in terms of a side that's also start, started to find form from New Zealand and knows how to win away from home. But I think the Jaguaris have still got a little bit too much at home and they've been consistent in their team selections and their performances and they've taken a lot of confidence. I think you said they won nine from the last 10. So I'm going with them to win and maybe by more than the five, three, two and a half point spread. I think they'll win by five to seven points. Um, I, like the, I like the Chiefs in this game. Like you said, they know how to win away. Sam came back. Um, they, they traveled to Buenos Aires this year, beat them there. So, you know, and that was without a uh, full strength side. I just like, I think the Chiefs are built to, to and match up well against the Jags. And it's the only game I would, I'm would. i going to have a bet on this weekend, so, you know, uh, it's, the one, it's the one where I think that the, the, the Chiefs probably should, should, should be favourites, but it could go either way. But uh, for me, I'm going to put 2,000 down on the Chiefs outright at uh, 12 to 10 to win um, 24, to win 4,400 right back. For me, the Chiefs outright to win this game. Look, the Chiefs, New Zealand side again, and I'm not, uh, uh, you know, uh, overinflating the New Zealand ability, but they certainly do know how to win uh, uh, rugby games. And uh, you're really um, out on a limb there, James. Yeah, no, 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 no I'm on a, on a limb. <laughs> so both of because, you are saying because Chiefs. if 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 the Jaguars start badly and they get behind, yeah. it's going to remain that way. Yeah. Um, the New Zealand sides have the ability to keep you out of a game. To choke you out of a game, so the, statistically that that will that will show. 
But uh, again, as, as Mark's concurred and I said initially, at home the Jaguaris are very, very good mm. and consistently good at home. So who are you going with? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Jaguars. You going Chiefs? I'm going Jaguars. Oh. Next, and don't forget folks, that game's at uh, 12.05 on, on Saturday morning or Friday night, depending on what your yeah. is. Um, next up, Hurricanes Bulls. Now, James, you were saying some outrageous stuff before we started filming. Who are you picking and why? Well, my my blood is blue. <laughs> it's blau. Blau, blau. Now, I am, I've been impressed with the Bulls' uh, uh, waveform uh, initially in the competition uh, in New Zealand. Um, their performance against the Lions last week impressed me. Uh, significantly not that i'm saying the lions uh, uh, are, are a good or a bad sign but their their creativity the way they carry the ball the interlinking of the backs and the forwards the pace of running onto the ball and uh, the ability to score tries you've got pollard who, who i mean every 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 team needs a good kicker um, and he certainly fills that role they keep you within within within, within distance at all stages so uh, that for me is going to be my my call my upset for for the for the Bulls to beat the Hurricanes. Well, really, no. I mean, they've got the, the bookies have them at thirteen and a half, so they're saying it'll win by thirteen or fourteen points. That's why I'm not a bookie, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they they've got them by thirteen and a half points. It's a lot of points. A lot it's, of points to cover. It, uh, it it almost would say that I am delusional in my in my comments now. I would but, say but I, I no no <laughs> thank you Kevin and that's very complimentary of you. <laughs> but guys now I'm gonna be hopeful. I'm gonna be hopeful and say that yes, I wanna see a South African side at this stage of the competition be able to travel abroad and beat a New Zealand team and uh, and hopefully beat them well. Yeah, it's sure man to help with us absorbing the cricket losses. Uh, is there cricket at the moment? No, no, no not that we're playing. Yeah, <laughs> and not that we know of in this country. Right? Uh, I don't think our team does. But if you, you talk about South Africa and New Zealand teams, an interesting statistic this year has been we've lost seven to them, uh, won five and drawn four. And this, so there's been very little uh, in the matchups between our best and their best. And if you look at the Springboks last year, there was nothing to, to differentiate the two teams in Absolutely. terms of scores mm -hmm. and the two-point uh, defeat uh, for New Zealand in um, in Wellington and then for the two-point defeat uh, for the Springboks in, at Loftus. So we certainly uh, uh, have got their measure in a way that I think from a physical point of view and with our mm -hmm. forwards mm -hmm. and any New Zealand side and it's rare that it happens when they get matched up front you can st stifle their rhythm in that. So for the Bulls to have a a shout there, they've really got to get stuck in to the Hurricanes pack physically. What surprised me, because I've always thought that the Hurricanes pack is fairly inferior when compared with the rest, but it surprised Almost. me how comfortably they came here and dealt with the Sharks and the Lions. And they would have taken a lot of confidence from that. But, but so, the Sharks pack is not a good pack. I'm not disputing that, I'm just I, I'm surprised that how comfortably they came to South Africa and just yeah. hammered two of our sides yeah. and then went back and kind of uh, beat a blue side with pretty much a second string outfit as well. So they've got good confidence in that. The, the Bulls, two draws in their last two games in New Zealand. So you would think they won't have that fear of going to New Zealand. But given that, I think the bookies have got this one spot on. 15 points for the Hurricanes. Let's, let's put it this way. They're certainly based on the statistics you put on the table. Um, that that uh, invincibility factor of South Africans going to New Zealand and getting walloped and thumped uh, it might have been so much more diminished now where we can go abroad to New Zealand and believe that we can actually win. So yes, I'm going to be true blue South African and I'm going to put this on, on the Bulls and albeit by even a small margin. Now for me, for me, 50, the bookies do have it right. However, in, in, a, in, a, in a playoff game, one, there's the, you don't get any style points. So there's, you know, kicking for the corners and all this stuff, you, people will be taking the points on offer. So I think the one that de decreases the, the, the point by what the, the, the Crusaders could win by. 
So he'll take three instead of five and go for seven. So I, I, I expect, I think 13 and a half is too many points. And uh, if I, I'm not betting on this game, but if I was, I, I would be, uh, I'd be saying that the, um, I'd be saying the Crusaders by about seven to 10. Hurricanes. Hurricanes, yes, sir. Okay, so you say that the Bulls can beat that handicap? They, they can beat that handicap, okay. And the last game, we got the Brumbies and the Sharks. So how was, uh, how was, how was that guy's rant? On, on yeah, well, he defines the KZN media. It's Mike Greenway. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only rugby writer in KZN. So he says the rugby S media. Still. Uh, still. Yeah, so is, that, so, is, he, is, is that a personal reference to, to Mike? To Mike, yeah. And, and Mike's been, uh, and rightfully so, he's been having a go at him the whole season to say and why. Mike's, he, Mike's a good journalist. He's a very good journalist and he's uh, experienced, he's been around and he's certainly not a vindictive journalist. So okay, as a former rugby player, no journalist is a good journalist. Okay, I'll take that as <laughs> well. Uh, I must tell you a wonderful story about James when he, they played against the All Blacks yeah. and they lost 55-35 in Auckland. And I, Bullshit. And I, and I wrote that it was embarrassing being a South African sitting in the press box. And so we got to Sydney, apparently he was looking for me uh, in the business class that's lounge. That's not the thing you want to hear. No, that's not, it wasn't the call I wanted to get when I arrived in Sydney. No. James Dalton's looking for you. Yeah. So uh, when I got into the business class lounge, I thought, well, I'm fairly protected in here. But he walked up to me and he said, he just wants to get his facts right. Then I write in the Sunday Star Times that it was an embarrassment being a South African in the press box. I said, that's correct. He said, you know how embarrassing it was being in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that ended well. That ended well with an embrace and a hug, okay? <laughs> and me saying you weren't that bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I think, uh, I think yeah, the, uh, regardless of how it goes, I think Robert De Prayer will get the sack. And he just seems disinterested in being there. And the, this, you know, his son, Robert De Prayer, is a good rugby player. Mm -hmm. and he, mm -hmm played brilliantly when he played for Western Province in the Stormers. Yeah. I don't know if he flourishes under his dad. I think some of his work, worst mm -hmm. rugby plays is when he's playing under his dad. Um, and he hasn't, oh, he hasn't stopped playing player. for the last 18 months. He went over uh, to England. He played in their season, came back straight here. And Kerman Bosch was the form player. Mm -hmm. um, and this constant thing of then not picking Kerman Bosch and then starting with Kerman Bosch and on 60 minutes premeditated regardless of how the game is going. Fussy has been outstanding at fullback. It's got such pace in that they take him off, put Kerwin Bosch to fullback and bring Robert Dupree on for the last 20. And it's just invariably slowed down the whole dynamic of the game. So, Well, how do coaches, how do coaches not see what everybody else sees? I mean, this is the thing that always, always surprises Kevin, me. Kevin, yeah, you know, you, you touch on that. I almost find like it's, it's almost like an acceptable trend that at a certain point you have to make substitutions. Yeah. It's like become a law of the game. You know, in my interpretation, first of all, the best man should run out the tunnel and back off the field after the final whistle, mm. unless injury or you really are pathetically poor, bad on the day you get substituted. But any momentum that is there should be held and kept mm. unless you way ahead and then you can make substitutions to give people game time. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's very old school in terms of the and what I played under. Um, what I can't... Sorry, sorry, it's no. old school. No, I'm not criticizing you. Okay. No, 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 I'm just saying that's... Yeah. No, because what I wanted to say we, that we, is we, because what we've got to do is aim to, to win and win well. So, you know, even if there are things that are from older generations that are still good, we need to apply those things. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I look, what amazes me even more is... is um, the coach's belief that he's beyond criticism, you know. It's but even coming back to that, you and I think you're one of the things you were alluding to there was everyone can see that the wrong guys play, and he's picking the other one. Mm. When you go back to 2015 and the Lions were outstanding that season, and Haney Kamei just refused to pick any of them. Yeah. Uh, not one of them went to the World Cup. Uh, he just kept on investing in those Bulls players, and he was just this insistence that he doesn't look beyond the one side of the X game. As Alistair did with, with, with yeah, the Stormers. Yeah, with the Stormers. He just kept on picking the Stormers players and that's what he believed in. So obviously Robert Dupree Sr. just believes in his son and won't see anything beyond that. And if again, it's, it's his job that's going to be on the line because they keep on losing or, or stumbling. So there's just a blind spot there. And uh, and look also, you know, look at Robert. I mean, uh, to, you know, we're picking on him properly. <laughs> But uh, you know, it's for my 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 version of him, he's a great rugby player. 
but I think it's just lacking that that flow of uh, 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 ingenuity and, and, and prowess and, and skill level. He's, he plays way too deep. He runs laterally. He, pa he uh, passes. He says, now you are picking on. No, 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 but he's, <laughs> you know, he's, he's kicking. He's kicking at best. He's inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, you've got to assess all those factors, and and then it, I think they speak for themselves. So I don't, you know, people say he's a good fly off. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe you should move a little bit further towards the midfield. Twelve. Or the, or the bench. Well, possibly, maybe. Now you guys are really big. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, possibly the stands. As, a, as an that? analyst. You cockroach media. <laughs> <laughs> well, that leads us to, we've got the Brumbies, Sharks. Um, Mark, I think you've got an interesting slide on this one. Yeah, I'm, uh, unlike James, who says something before we come on and then says the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Sharks to win this, having just taken Robert the Pure apart. <laughs> 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 I, the Brumbies have had a good run at home. They've been uh, everyone at home, I think, and I'm beaten at home this season. But uh, I think I think the Sharks will win this one. As outrageous as your call is on the Bulls to win, that would be my. What are the score. win statistics at Canberra for for South African teams? Well, they've, they've not good, not, not not good, not good this season. But last season they they won a few games there. I think the mm. Bulls won and the Lions won. The Brumbies were in a rebuilding. I think they've been in a rebuilding phase for about ten years now. Something they seem to play better away from home. I think they've lost four or five games at home this season, but one on the road uh, more than they've actually won. Correct, correct. Uh, at home, so I don't know what it is. Maybe they can't deal the, with the humidity in Durban or the pressure of, oh, yo, of, yo, of yo, that yo. one man band media. That's that's the other thing. Is you've noticed the trend that when South African teams play badly, they blame it on wet weather. Mm. <laughs> but all both teams play in wet weather on that day. Yeah, one, one forgets that. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah. uh, it's almost become like a, a South African acceptance. So the bookies say seven. And a half. <laughs> uh, the bookies say seven and a half. I, Mark, I don't, I don't get it. The sharks. I mean, seven and a half. I, I think the Brumbies will win and win well. They, like you said, they're unbeaten at home this year. A good side, especially at home. Um, just can't see the Sharks getting on a plane, going there, and beating them. Especially with that coach. If he makes the same selections again. Yeah, well, he may be on 60 minutes. Of the <laughs> no, I've got them to win. I don't yeah. think the. I got them to an at worst case scenario. Did you bump, bump, did you bump your head? Uh, on the way in. Yeah, on the way in, yeah. Certainly sounds like it. On the way in. So I've got them to win. But at worst for them, beat the handicapping if you're a punter. I would okay. say, I don't think the Brummies will beat them by eight or more. Okay, sure. James, what do you say? Look, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, I'm afraid to ask. But <laughs> I, I have to say, with uh, with a heavy heart, but uh, certainly I'm, I'm going to go with the, with the Brummies. How many points do you think you're going to win by? I would go minimum of seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it's a game again I won't touch. Um, Bucky's have a reasonably, reasonably handicapped, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they took a, a double digit beating. Super Brew, what's your game with? I'll, I'll go with Rumbies with 10. Super Brew? He said yeah, seven. Yeah, seven. I'd still stick to it. Yeah. Listen, Marky. Sharks by five. <laughs> Sharks by five. Okay, what, what, what do you, what, what's the wager? If uh, if the Sharks win, and or on my side, if the Brumbies win, who pays for what? Well, Kev pays for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> cheap skate. <laughs> there you have it, folks. Uh, Mark, thanks. Yeah. James, thanks, bud. Thanks, and thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Mark. Let's see how it goes. Thanks, guys.